As we close out the second day of the 2011 uh, Sebring U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, it's nice to get back to the roots here. You and I have known each other several decades, going way back to the uh, early days of the ultralight industry and got a few war stories to tell from those days, that's for sure. Oh, yes. But you've come a long way, but in particular specializing, of course, in amphibians. Now, the Sea Ray has been through a number of iterations, but the part that we're really excited about is an LSA version of the Sea Ray. Tell us what happened. Well, we saw what the market was needing, and that, you know, as the market was growing, that the LSA is the way to go. It improves sales. It gave us a chance to then improve the design of the Sea Ray. We have gone through the structural design and through the flight dynamics of it, totally redesigned the structure of it, actually, or enhanced it, made it a stronger machine, a better flying machine, a more gentle machine, made it more a pilot's machine so that it's easier for especially a newcomer to get into and have easier times with it, less problems. You mentioned that you made all these changes. Well, how did that show up in the airplane? What kind of physical and structural and aerodynamic changes took place? Well, along with just being a higher structure in strength, you know, you can take higher G loads. The other enhancements are is that the stall is almost non-existent. It is extremely resistant to spins. The stall speed has dropped over what the classic C ray is. We're at about 10 miles per hour slower in the stall speed. Wow and we're a little bit faster in the top speed, not a lot, about another five miles per hour on the top speed. But overall, the flight characteristics, it's a gentle airplane. It is very forgiving. The original version was forgiving, so that uh, to make it more so sounds really intriguing. Compared to the original, this is by far a lot more forgiving. When we get up and do a flight demonstration with you, you'll see. Well, we look forward to that, that's for sure. You, you and I have had some fun and some great adventures in these birds. Um, especially considering where you and I started flying these things out of that little pond in Claremont. Oh, yes. that, that's insane. <laughs> it, it, it's very hard to explain to Aero News readers, but ex take a look at the smallest pond you can think of, and we'd fly in and out of there all day long without any problem at all. And that, was, uh, that was quite the test, uh, test area. Yeah, the aircraft's a little heavier now. It won't go out of quite as small a pond now, but it uh, will still get out of some pretty small areas. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. What's happening now to turn uh, progressive Aerodyne from a amateur built kit and experimental builder uh, manufacturer into an LSA manufacturer. How is this going to work? When are they going to be available? And more important than anything else, how much? The target price is, it depends um, exactly the equipment, but we're looking at a fully loaded amphibian with a 914 turbo, a glass cockpit. It should come in at about 125,000 for the amphibian. We're looking to have then a more minimal version to hopefully start in the 90s. We're working through the LSA certification process now. We have gone through all the flying surfaces. I've already met all the criteria for light sport aircraft in the G loadings and its flight characteristics. Uh, we're finishing up some other processes yet. Uh, we hope to be done toward the latter part of this year and be ready to start producing then. And what kind of production rate are you looking at? That's still to be determined yet, but we're trying to, we will start out at a lower amount. We want to at least try to get assembled ones, see if we can get about one every two weeks out of there with the assembly facility and see if we can get that bumped up to eventually one per week. Now, how is that going to change your company going from somebody who's been supplying components and, su and supporting kit builders to furnishing completely built aircraft? Well, we still will be supplying a kit aircraft. We'll have it in the 51% experimental category. We'll offer it as an ELSA and as an SLSA, so they'll have their choice. Well, overall, if somebody decides to do the building themselves, how much might they save? Uh, on a build, say if it's like a 51%, amateur built, they'll save at least $30,000. What is a, uh, this particular configuration going to take as far as building times now? We'll still be able to have the majority of it built. It will be just some final assembly, rigging, along those lines there, you know, assembly of uh, flaps, ailerons, control surfaces on it, but okay. most of it will be built for them. So they'll be able to save a little bit on that too.
plus it won't be in the certified category. To go from a, an established manufacturing operation and, and change its modus operandi, especially into deliver, delivering flyaway aircraft, that's got to be a big investment for you. What did it take to turn you into an LSA manufacturer from a standpoint of uh, staffing and infrastructure? And as I understand, you just moved the whole company. Yes, we just moved it to Varys. Uh, we have been working at it as we go along with the cash flow, but we now also have investors that are coming into the company, which is going to help boost it, uh, bring it forward much faster. We're going to be able to grow. We're going to be able to expand also into China. We actually have a Chinese man that will be setting up a facility over in China. It'll still be under Progressive Aerodyne. We'll be the home base company here. It'll be the primary base. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. With production, I assume, starting around the end of the year and, and going from there on out, where do you expect this aircraft to go? I mean, it, you know, obviously you, you're a company that's been tweaking on this. There have been a number of derivations. You've worked on the, uh, the hull, you've worked on the wing, you've worked on a number of things. This has been a wonderfully evolved little airplane. I, mean, I remember way back when you were looking at a four place and so forth. I mean, do you see growing into that area? Yes, we still have the four place. It's been put on the back burner right now until we are finished certification and get this into production as an assembly line. We will be back onto the four place. It will become available also initially as a 51% amateur built kit. We plan on taking it into a FAR-23 certified aircraft, so, but it'll be available both ways also. You've been a, a Rotax shop by and large. We were just uh, looking over at uh, Viking Aircraft, was an engine that they're talking about being adapting, uh, or adaptive to Sea Ray. Are you looking at alternative engines and engines like that now? Yeah, we're always looking at alternative engines as long as they can meet the performance and the weight criteria that, you know, will at least match what a Rotax can do. Obviously, too, if they can make a better price, that's always better. We've been through the industry many years, going through a lot of engines that have had a lot of promises to them. And uh, so far, they really haven't met the criteria, the promises. Now, you took your time getting into LSA. You, you've been smart about watching what's going on out there and who's doing what and who's failed and who's succeeded. Why LSA now? And what did it take to really push the decision to a point where to commit to this much capital and your company to that kind of action? Well, to see the fact that LSA was really going to work because they come up earlier with primary aircraft where that actually kind of fell by the wayside. And so we wanted to see that LSA was actually going to be for real. And we've watched it. You can see it grow and it is for real. So we decided to proceed ahead with it. Well, one of the things that we've been looking at is there's a tremendous variety of aircraft out here, but at some point there was going to be some consolidation. We see the first signs of it now. One of the sur obvious survivors in all this has to be you. You've been at this for, what, 17, 18 years? We've been at it since 92 on the Sea Ray. And we started manufacturing earlier aircraft under another company, Advanced Aviation, since 1977. So at this point, as, as one of the titular survivors, one of the ones that looks like it's going to make it, what advice would you give to somebody looking at the LSA industry and considering an amphib or wanting some kind of water capability? Why your company? Why this airplane? Why now? Check out the company, the history, the background, the reputation, see what the aircraft has done, where it's been, who's behind it, uh, see what the performance factors are, you know, if they actually meet for real the light sports certification processes. You, know, you want to make sure that the company has gone through all the ropes to make sure that they have done it properly. Well, we thank you for your time. We look forward to trying out uh, an LSA-configured Sea uh, Ray for ourselves. It's been, uh, I mean, I've had some great flights in the airplane, and you and I were talking about this the other day. I mean, we've had some great adventures, and over the years I've just had a ball with the airplane, and I really look forward to seeing what you've done with it.